Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. It's been another active period on the electricity front, with project registrations, a new load shedding report, and a presidential update on the crisis all taking place this week. Terence Prima joins me to discuss developments. Hi, Terence. Hi, Chanel. Firstly, the project's registrations seem to be kicking into gear. Yes, this has been a, a bit of a bugbear. Um, NERSA has had a registration process for the 100 megawatts uh, embedded generation plants after the market reform, which allowed sub-100 megawatt plants to proceed without a license. But there was some confusion or there were fairly onerous conditions on the uh, registration of these projects, which, they, which you still needed to go through with the regulator. And it seems like the regulator has now gotten into a rhythm. Earlier in the month, it had two 100 megawatt projects approved. And then this week, another 16 uh, embedded uh, generation projects approved. Most of them sub one megawatt, uh, as, as, as was allowed for under the previous regime. But there were a number of uh, plus 10 megawatt projects. And interestingly, a wind farm, a 75 megawatt wind farm was registered as well as a large 80 megawatt solar PV plant. So we're starting to see that this uh, re registration process is now gaining traction and the size of the projects that are coming through uh, under the previous regime, it was limited to sub one megawatts and we're still seeing those. So about 600 of those have gone through the system. Now we're seeing some of the larger uh, scale ones that are allowed for now under the market reform. And uh, there's been an indication that one of the, the sticking points was around the power purchase agreement and whether that was a necessary condition for registration. That is no longer a condition for registration. So I think we're going to see now a regular rhythm of registrations and hopefully more and more shovels in the ground so that we can get this much needed embedded generation electricity into our system. But the bad news on load shedding continues. Yes, unfortunately, as expected, 2021 has now been confirmed as South Africa's worst ever year for load shedding by the CSIR in a new report. And we saw that over th about 13% of the hours in the year last year were affected by load shedding. Over 2,500 gig gigawatt hours were shed uh, at the upper limit. So that's a, a lot of load shedding. And unfortunately, that trend has continued into 2022, even though the statistical report provided by the CSR doesn't look forward, uh, we know that the energy availability factor from the coal fleet has not improved despite more intensification on the planned maintenance front. And therefore, already during the first few months, or well, the first half of this year, we've seen much higher levels of load shedding and at higher stages than we did uh, in, in previous years. So I think we are set up now, poised, unless something changes dramatically, which I doubt, because the energy availability factor of this coal fleet has been deteriorating year on year, and I don't think it's going to recover materially this year. So unless there's a miracle, I think 2022 is going to be an even more intensive year for load shedding. While ESCOM has been consulting with experts on solutions, the president has unveiled a new six-step plan. Yes, I think there's a lot of interest in what ESCOM is doing. Uh, they're soliciting advice from international and domestic uh, experts doing this fairly discreetly, and we don't know where that will all fall. But uh, at the same time, we've seen, as I mentioned, that 100 megawatt reform starting to gain traction. And in Parliament this week, uh, the President, Sir Ramaphosa, gave an update on sort of six steps that are being taken immediately uh, to try and alleviate the, the this load shedding crisis. Obviously, these, all these projects take time and all these initiatives take time to implement. So as I said earlier, I don't think there's going to be any immediate relief, but you know, important signal one, uh, the president said, re reiterated needing to get the, 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 the wheels really moving around that embedded generation program and, and indicating that there is a lot of action happening there. Uh, so we should see more projects coming through the system. And obviously on the procurement front, we've had a number of stop starts there, again, unfortunately, and emphasizing the need to get bid window five of the renewables program completed and then move into a, a regular rhythm of renewables procurement, allowing municipalities 
to do their bit and start procuring electricity. We see a number of the large metro councils are already moving quite assertively on this front. So that's an important uh, step. Also, still uh, putting a little bit of eggs in the Eskom basket, basket and asking for Eskom to try and recover the energy availability factor from its coal fleet and also bring in the units from Madupi and Kusile that are not in the system. There, I think we are on a secular decline. I don't think the EAF is going to recover, but maybe we can come to a more stable point uh, of production from a smaller base, ultimately. And then I think one of the interesting points made by the president this week was that he would like to see far more uh, small-scale solar PV rooftop on both households and on uh, factories and farms and mines so that they can start bringing some relief. And he mentioned that those sort of uh, plants should be allowed to uh, feed into the grid. Now, we know a few cities do allow for that, but very few. So I think that the president is giving a line of march for all metropolitan councils and all uh, uh, providers or distributors of electricity to try and find a feed-in regime, because this is the quickest, cheapest way to try and bring in additional capacity, allow people to put rooftop solar on their Plants don't have it so uh, scaled that it's, it's only for your house, but can also feed in at a much reduced tariff into the grid for the municipality. So that what they'll be paying Eskom relative to what they'll be paying you would be much less, but at least there is some relief and that gives some space in the system for the much needed maintenance of the coal fleet. And then in the meantime, the bigger picture, uh, the president announced, uh, confirmed the announcement that the RP would be reviewed. Uh, we know that's wildly out of date and needs to be reviewed urgently. And then we have these steps being taken through, uh, through Eskom to consult how do we get a stable supply system with uh, affordable tariffs and uh, also meeting our climate commitments. So there are these, definitely there are signs of progress and there are glimmers of hope, but I think for the next few months or, and probably years, load shedding will remain a reality. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.